there we have our last view of San Carlos water, something that wouldn't bother most of us if we never saw it again. February the 11th, 1984. That's a day that will remain in people's minds for a long time. That was the day that HMS Liverpool finally arrived in the Falkland Islands to relieve us, and we were to sail from San Carlos Water for the last time. The previous three months had been a rather arduous time for the ship's company. A lot of hard work was done, but there was also a lot of boring times, especially when we were out on patrol. However, we were finally to leave the Falkland Islands Protection Zone and head on our way back towards Portsmouth. The first part of our journey was a high-speed dash across the South Atlantic from the Falklands to Barbados, where we spent four glorious days basking in the sunshine. Then there was yet another high-speed dash, this time through the Caribbean, to Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Here we spent six days relaxing and preparing ourselves for the trip home. And then the final leg of our journey was across the North Atlantic where thankfully the weather was very kind to us and we finally arrived home in Portsmouth on Sunday the 18th of March. After the rigours of the South Atlantic then on the cruise towards Barbados the ship's company decided they ought to enjoy themselves and one of the first things that happened once we got into the warmer weather of the tropics was we had a village fair on the flight deck this was held on one Saturday afternoon and all messes were invited to provide a stall for the occasion and all profits went to the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. One of the popular stalls was throwing sponges at well-known personalities around the ship. In fact, the first person to stand in the pillory was the commander. There was a roller golf ball competition. human one-armed bandit. There is a grand raffle run by the water. And what is a commonly called come and view the grunt board. Three mess ran a roller penny. In fact it was a roller tuppence. And there was a competition to see who could eat three ship's biscuits in under two minutes. This, in fact, was a feat that only achieved by two or three people during the afternoon. We had toffee apples on sale and lime juice. There was also a dart store where you could win yourself a pound note. Altogether, during the afternoon, over £320 was raised for the RNLI. Four mess ran a Wheel of Fortune, and the wardroom ran a barbecue for the evening. Yeah. 
eventually, after a lot of watching and wondering what to do next, the wardroom got on with the cooking. Eventually the strain became too much and the lads started queuing up for their supper. The off was sounded and away they went. Then one evening we had a kite flying competition. There was prizes of cans of beer for the best looking kite and for the best flying kite, also for the highest flying kite. As you can see quite a few different designs there and eventually it was time to see which ones would fly. This kite won the prize for the best design and they decided to give it first chance. Unfortunately, first attempt didn't go very well. Nor did that one. Eventually, one of the kites got airborne. This was a kite designed and built by Cook Rab Butler. Meanwhile, some of the other kites weren't having quite so much luck. <laughs> Eventually, one of the other kites got airborne. Rad Butler decided to bring his kite over to have a look. And then a third kite got airborne. This one was put up by the Chinese laundry crew. So eventually, out of the dozen or so entrants, we had three kites airborne. And then the competition was on to see who could get their kite to fly the highest. Eventually, after a dash across the South Atlantic, the ship was arriving in Barbados. By now, we were all in tropical uniform, and we were falling in again for Procedure Alpha, the first time since we'd left Portsmouth, ready for our arrival in Barbados. The weather was very warm and sunny the day we arrived, and we were expecting a good crowd to welcome us. 
unfortunately, the jetty was bare. The period in Barbados was for rest and relaxation. There was very little official entertainment organised. Decided that most of the ship's company would just like to relax on the beach and enjoy themselves in the sunshine. Here we are now tying up in Deepwater Harbour in Bridgetown, the capital of Barbados. During our period there, several cruise liners came in for short stopovers. And there were also a few sailing ships there. And also those two Jolly Roger floating restaurants. Then it was on from Barbados across the Caribbean to Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Here we had changed back into blue uniforms again as the weather was a little cooler. Here it was only up in the 70s most of the time. And it was rather a hazy day the day we arrived in Fort Lauderdale. Here we can see. You can see here a lot of the skyscrapers which are rather important landmark on the coastline in this part of America. The amazing thing was that the skyscrapers were only actually along the seafront. Once you moved inland, they tended to disappear. entrance to Fort Lauderdale Harbour. Some of the beautiful beaches that line either side of the harbour entrance. It was early morning when we arrived here, so the beaches were still rather deserted. American warships in harbour when we arrived, among them the USS Independence, one of their aircraft carriers. And there was also the USS Virginia, a nuclear-powered cruiser. Vista Field was there, one of the cruise liners that had come into Barbados while we were there. And on the jetty waiting for us was the wives and girlfriends of some members of the ship's company. Quite a few people had taken the opportunity to fly out to Florida to enjoy a well-earned holiday whilst the ship was there.
Fort Lauderdale is one of the boating centres of the eastern seaboard of the USA and in fact boasts the two largest marinas in the world. Around Fort Lauderdale there's some 140 odd miles of waterway, both natural and man-made. There are quite a few large private yachts in the area as well. This is part of an area known as Millionaire's Row. You can see why when you look at the boats and the houses that there are in that area. These are some of the man-made canals, with houses built on the canal banks and the boats tied up at the bottom of the garden. Meanwhile, out at sea, there's quite a few windsurfers around. And this is part of the main beach in Fort Lauderdale. American coast cars were very much in evidence. And there was also lifeguards every few hundred yards along all the main beaches. Nowhere in Fort Lauderdale can you move more than a few hundred yards without coming across more water and even more boats. This bit of water is called the Intracoastal and in fact goes from the south of Florida right the way up to Canada. On the banks of this river, more rather palatial houses. And also some quiet backwaters Again, every house with its own private jetty and a boat at the bottom of the garden. And there we have the ship tied up alongside the main harbour in Fort Lauderdale. Well, after six days in Fort Lauderdale, it was time for the last leg of our journey back across the North Atlantic to Portsmouth. We took the opportunity to top up with fuel two or three times on the way across. Here we see HMS Manchester waiting her turn to go up alongside the Olna to refuel. We are also waiting our turn. HMS Apollo finishes refueling and is breaking away. And HMS Yarma, Yarmouth is to the port side of the Olna there, refueling. Eventually it was our turn, we moved alongside Olna and got ready to fire our line across. comes our fuel line to top us up for the last time before arriving back in UK. While we're refuelling, Manchester waits patiently in the background. And then finally, the moment we were all waiting for, the day that Portsmouth arrived out of the gloom 
and we were once again back home. Everyone in a very happy mood this morning, although it was a bit chilly for us. And two visiting pipers that we had on board, the man on the left from the Black Watch and the one on the right from the Regiment of Fusiliers. We had brought about a dozen soldiers with us from America, one, some from our twin regiment of the Black Watch and some from the Fusiliers that had been with us in the Falklands. And eventually we were close enough to the walls of Old Portsmouth to see some of the friends and families that were waiting to greet us. The hot walls at Old Portsmouth were rather full and so was the Round Tower. behind us, HMS Manchester came in, the other ships, HMS Apollo and HMS Yarmouth, had gone to their respective base ports at Plymouth and Recife. And eventually Middle Slip Jetty, where we were finally to tie up after our five months away. We hope you have enjoyed this video of our deployment to the South Atlantic and perhaps you have learnt something of our life and activities on board whilst we have been away. And now from all of us on HMS Fife, I bid you all a very fond farewell.
Thank you. 